All right, we got to talk about this. It's uh, it's an entire thing. So I did a video earlier on Chris Rufo and how he basically spearheaded the entire anti-CRT campaign for the conservative side of politics in the United States. This one is from Asina. It said, discussing war words. It is me and Raz in Hero Forge uh, talking about the terrible, terrible things that happen on my channel. The next one we have here is from The Mini Ace. It said, fan art in the form of uh, I T E H A T T S D. I don't, I. It has to reference done because of the Yu-Gi-Oh tournament in the discord that started around uh when that was first announced then greatly delayed for various reasons yeah un unfortunately I was not able to actually get that up and running because the progression bot is not working and we were not able to find a way to get the progression bot working and that sucks uh but of course we've got blizzies being summoned uh by Raz and they are they are just custodies they are just custodies, and that is beautiful. The last one we have here is from Axo that has cream. Uh, said, a blizzy heckin' bleppin', and you can't stop him. It's true. It's true. You cannot stop the blizzy. As always, everybody, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. With that said, if you have not already hit the like button or subscribed or maybe even checked out the Patreon, maybe consider doing so. All those things help the channel out more than you can ever possibly comprehend. With that said, let's go ahead and take a look at first the Twitter thread from Christopher Rudo, where most people are, uh, Rufo, where people are going to be getting most of their information from here. And then we'll go into a bit more information where this is concerned. So it says here, scoop. Portland Public Schools now teaching elementary school students to subvert the sexuality of white colonizers. Acknowledge that girls can have penises and begin experimenting with Zezer pronouns and exploring the infinite gender spectrum. Here is the story. So, of course, this is a bit of a straw man of how we talk about gender most of the time around. Like, aha, explore the whole gender spectrum. We're like, hey, you, you might be a dude, you might be a girl, but, you know, you might be somewhere between. Uh, who knows? Who cares? You figure it out for yourself. Go have fun. Mint Kuro, thank you very much for giving me your points, friend. Owl. Owl. Uh, but he's got several pictures here, and they are from... The actual document here, uh, gender is colonized, gender and sexuality diversity have existed since people have been on Earth. Uh, gender and sexuality diversity have existed since people have been, oh, since people have been on Earth, the different words that people use to describe themselves have changed over time. This is true. White colonizers tried to erase many cultures, including uh, what some might now call queer or trans people, but these cultures already had words for, or cultures including, and ways of thinking about gender and sexuality. So, I have a, I have a problem with how this is worded, but also, it's not untrue. Uh, Herr Schrodinger, thank you very much for the 500 for hydrating. So, when I did research ages ago, uh, into Uganda. Some of the information I found during that was really, really interesting. One of which, uh, one piece of information was that that culture, which is incredibly homophobic right now, like, holy shit, really fucking homophobic. They used to not be. They used to also have a third gender, uh, in their dichotomy for language. Like they had, they had male, they had female, and then they had a third uh, amorphous one that was used on their society as well. But you know what happened? The British colonized them. You may find, and I find, the language of white colonizers made the gender binary. It, it, it sounds really cringy. It sounds very awkward. It's, it's very inelegant language. But historically, 
when the British were colonizing multiple different places, when they brought their brand of Christianity there, that's a lot of what happened. Like, I know it sounds weird, but functionally, that's kind of what happened. So when he when he shows stuff like this, which is made to make conservatives cringe, uh, gender is colonized. Different cultures use different words because gender is created by people and changes over time. Language is often about power. Colonization is about taking over, controlling and erasing the places, cultures and identities of indigenous people who were already living there. When white European people colonized different places, they brought their own ideas about gender and sexuality. When the United States was colonized by white settlers, their views around gender were forced upon the people already living here. Hundreds of years later, how we talk about gender is still impacted by this shift. So when this type of stuff is thrown at a conservative, they're supposed to have a knee-jerk reaction. They're supposed to have an immediate like, oh my God, how dare you say this about white people? Blah, 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 blah. He chooses these specific pieces because he knows they are the pieces that will get the immediate reactions. If you don't believe me, here, let's go ahead and check out the quote tweets of it. This is 100% grooming. There's no other way to define it. Remember when I said that we would see the grooming discourse come back stronger than ever during this, and it was just going to keep on getting amplified? Here we are. Partly it's about everybody in class pointing at the white kids and shouting oppressor until they change their pronouns. Really? Really? Is that what's happening here? If you look at several of the sh if you if you look at several of the comments here, almost everybody who is responding to this is doing that exact knee jerk reaction that I'm talking about. This is what your friendly neighborhood Democrats want your kids learning in elementary. Wake up. This is ridiculous. And it goes on and on and on. Why do we have these kinds of reactions? Because these are the reactions that people have been primed to have. And I understand if you're a conservative watching my content, you're probably primed to have the exact same reaction. In fact, actually, you were probably adequately primed before even coming onto my channel to type into my comment section saying, oh my God, what is that about your voice? Why do you have that voice, but you have a cat girl avatar? That's so gross. I'm, I've seen it a thousand times because I read my comment section. As much as that's probably a terrible idea for my mental health, it is a thing I do in fact do. So just as there are plenty of people who are going to be primed to react this way, there's going to be just as many people now who are going to be signal boosting from this. Now, currently, when I first took a look at this, when I started, when I started doing research for this, this had 800 retweets. It now has almost 4,000 retweets. And by the time I'm done saying this entire like sentence, it will probably have hit that 4,000 retweet marker, that 8,000 like marker. It's spreading and it's propagating. We are, we are literally watching it in real time. When we did the first bit on Christopher Rufo, we were talking about something that happened before when he did his first campaign against CRT. Now we are talking about something he's doing now. As in, he just put this up six hours ago. 3,999 retweets and another one will be coming shortly. So where is he getting all this from? Where is he getting all the information from itself? Well, if you go over to his blog, he actually has an entire bit here called In Portland, the Sexual Revolution Starts in Kindergarten, where he's put a bit of information out here, and none of it's super important. The part that I want to actually talk about is the original article. So the document he's pulling from, the document that he has grabbed, what, 12, 16-ish screenshots from, is from this 200-slide presentation. 200 slides. Now, this is basically 
let's let's take a look at it here. Body parts we know. Arms, legs, ears, knees, foot, shoulders, hands, elbows, heads, bellies, back. What's a part of your body that you love? Parts where your swimsuit covers up can be called middle parts. Different people have different middle parts. Some people call middle parts your private parts, but any part of your body can be private. Private means you only show people you trust and help you stay healthy, like your parents or your doctor. Only you get to decide who touches and looks at your body. Do you, do you see any problems in here so far? Because I don't. Every family thinks about their middle parts in different ways. Sometimes we feel silly or nervous talking about them, and that's okay. Today we're being scientists to know about our bodies. Some bodies are kind of like yours. Other bodies are not like yours at all. Most bodies have these middle parts. Nipples, anus, butt, urethra. And then I'm going to skip past that one just so we don't get TOS'd. Uh, but then it has a bit here where it's talking about this is what a penis is. This is what a vagina is. You can see the small bits there. Now... This seems to me to be really not that different from what we would find in a usual sex ed course. There's nothing overtly sexual being shown, and even the drawings themselves, they're rather crude. There's not a whole lot of anything there that you wouldn't find kids already drawing on their notebooks. Honestly, this is, yeah, this is literally just basic anatomy is what they're talking about goes on here say your body will change as you get older every kid's body changes a lot of times your body parts can get bigger and help you do more things time to use our art skills to draw our favorite body parts and it goes on so again aside from the parts where it's like aha this is what a middle part looks like what's the actual issue that we have here what's the actual problem this is again just basic anatomy you're not showing anything sexual. You're not showing people who are actually doing anything with one another. You aren't talking about sex. You are literally just talking about body parts. And the fact that some people talk about body parts that are private and they do it in different ways. I don't really see much issue with that. Now, again... There is no guarantee that this is actually information that is from their curriculum specifically. Like, I don't know which schools are using this curriculum exactly. I don't, because I don't have that information. On Christopher Rufo's site, he did say that he pulled this from a source inside uh, the public schools, but that's about as far as we've gotten here. I would like to do a follow-up video on this where I talk with an actual public school educator who has maybe seen this from an internal side and can tell me how this is being taught in their schools. Because from what I'm seeing here, make sure to use the wording written on the slides. Let's see. Make sure to use the wording written on the slides as it was very intentional and is gender inclusive for all identities. The slides are text heavy to help teachers with language. This lesson was written by trans people. The lesson is designed for kindergarten through third grade classes and is developmentally appropriate. The last slide has a link with a list of amazing books for you to learn more and share with your students. If any of this is new for you, please stay curious and learn more about these topics. So it's a lesson guide. That's what this is. And what's the actual issue here? What's the actual problem? Well, if you look at the way that it's being framed over on Chris Rufo's site, he's finding the bits that are most hard to grasp for people. So the bits about gender being colonized, the bits about assigned sex and gender, the bits about how gender is a spectrum. Even if we accept that gender is bimodal, which is how I prefer to view gender, it's still that's still a spectrum. It's just a spectrum with two extremes, but it's still categorically a spectrum he shows the bits where it's showing the private parts because those are the parts that are going to get the reactions and in fact actually we can look at those reactions right here this is completely cuckoo this is criminal basic human anatomy is apparently criminal is this real how did we get here god help us very graphic it won't be gay sex trust me 
What? What? How did gay sex come into that conversation? Why is this happening? Why are schools misallocating resources towards social theory and away from academics? We're, we're literally talking about anatomy. This is literally anatomy. This, this is academics. Also, social theory? If, if you studied English, you have been studying parts of social theory. Come on. Now, at most, I could say that this is maybe a little much for somebody in kindergarten. But if we have found that it is developmentally appropriate, then I'm not an expert. I'm not going to speak with authority. Because what I want to do as my knee-jerk reaction is to immediately go, this is inappropriate for the kids. Ugh! But then I kind of take a step back and realize, oh, wait a minute. What am I basing that off of? What, what am I referring that to? Because I had a very, very whitewashed curriculum when I was growing up. Basic shit like this was not taught to me because I grew up in Pensacola Christian Academy. My private school didn't even have a sex ed class. I never got that experience. I wish I did, but I didn't. Panda Cat Envy says, I had two whole models of the human body. One of them was male and had all the muscle tissue. The other was female and transparent and had a pregnant attachment. Say, uh, Kay says, I'm not really sure how you determine age appropriateness in general. Typically, it comes down to if we show this to a kid at a certain age, um, what will the end result be? Will the end result be a type of trauma? If so, not age appropriate. If we show this to a child and they can grasp it and understand it, then it's appropriate for the child. Here's the thing. My personal take is that outside of the nudity part here, which again is just basic anatomy, so even my knee-jerk reaction is likely wrong, uh, my personal take is outside of the nudity slides, realistically, none of this is something that we wouldn't have already gone over in a regular class if we just had an English class, right? When you have an English class or a writing class and you talk about pronouns in those classes, when you're talking about nouns, pronouns, verbs, adverbs, you're going in like how a sentence is written, you're already talking about this stuff. All you're doing is taking that foundational knowledge and moving a little more. Then he moves on to the slides from second grade, which we can actually find by scrolling all the way down, like here-ish. It'll take us a while to get there, though. Again, there is a lot of shit here. But it's a 200-page document meant to be internalized over the course of five years so that kind of makes sense you don't have to understand everything about all genders in order to respect a person and their gender all of us have many identities that are unique stay curious and learn how to affirm all genders even if you don't understand someone else's gender that feels perfectly normal also we found we found this part that he was freaking out about the gender is a universe here let's take a look at it in the original document Cisgender, any person who has the same gender that was assigned to them at birth. Transgender, any person whose gender is different than the gender that was assigned to them at birth based on assumptions about your body parts or shape. This can include non-binary people since no one is called non-binary at birth. Okay, cool. What what's What's the actual issue here? I'm not seeing anything here that is a problem. At most, I could see something that is confusing for a parent. But you have to remember, as a parent, what is appropriate for your child is something that you're not an expert in. Most parents aren't. Most parents who are honest with themselves will say that they have been stumbling through raising their children from the beginning, and they were very ill-prepared for doing the child-rearing in the first place. All we have, 99.999% of the time, are our knee-jerk reactions to these things. Said transphobes probably think mentioning trans people is inappropriate at all ages. Yeah, I've had that conversation with someone uh, who I would definitely consider transphobic in real life. And they have said those exact things to me. I don't want my kids learning about it. Uh, okay, why? Like, this was a person who had friends who were trans. And when asked, like, you know, why, why do you not want your kids learning about this? I just want to think it's appropriate for them. 
So it's appropriate to have a trans person in your house use their correct pronouns in your house, but it's not appropriate to have any of that education like in, in the school itself. That's like saying it's inappropriate to learn about how a sentence is structured, but it's appropriate to read a fucking book. This is probably says I would have figured out myself much sooner if I had uh, if I had this that young. Yeah, a lot of people would. So I've also noticed something in a lot of these in, in a lot of the responses here uh, on Twitter. People have been saying the entire point is to desta destabilize their sense of self. But when I read through this, I'm not finding things that would destabilize someone's sense of self. I'm finding stuff that would affirm it. Like merely being told at a young age, hey, there's a lot of ways you can identify whichever one you use is valid. That's stabilizing enough. And yeah, there's plenty of fucking people who are in chat right now saying that, hey, if I had this kind of education at that age, my life would have been better. My life would have been improved. And again, I understand that there's a knee-jerk reaction to stuff like the... Uh, the conversation about, you know, white colonizers. Even I think that that language is very heavy handed. That is not the language that I would be using. I can see some backfire effect for that language, not just with the parents, but also with the students who might not understand that, you know, hey, this is not. This does not mean that the fellow white kids in your class are bad. So that's just my take on that one. I have a handful of issues with this, but not so much that I would say burn the entire fucking curriculum down or do what I've seen a lot of people saying uh, in the comments here. I've seen a lot of people say that this is mental illness. This is all mental illness. And yet I don't. Can, can, can we can we can we do something here? Can we ask? people who are conservative to stop blaming everything they don't like on mental illness please for one most of them don't know what a fucking mental illness is for two this is how we get people not understanding mental illness in the first place when we just call something we don't like mental illness Mr. Stopoli says, I wouldn't have been so ashamed of my body and actually taking care of myself if I understood myself that young not understanding left me neglecting my health well, I'm sorry you have, I'm sorry your health has not been that great stuff. I'm sorry. That is a person with mental illness is dehumanizing. Yep. Like you not understanding something does not automatically mean that it's time to to label it mental health. Um so, so teachers and students can change their name to match who they are, like their gender culture or just what they like better, they can adopt synthetic sexual identities and experiment with they, them, and zezer pronouns. Only you can know what your gender is. So what's the actual problem here? Let's see what the responses are to this. Angry, get the fuck out of here. Either take your kids out of public schools or get in there and take over the school board. Parents must remove their children from mentally ill indoctrinators. You can live in your own made up world. Why are Democrats doing this to children? It's abuse. These are the type of reactions that are expected. These are the type of reactions that Rufo wants. Because remember, Rufo is literally his goal, his stated position has been to undermine the public school system. Tell so I love how it's Democrats. It's yeah, it's definitely Democrats. It's always got to be Democrats. You have to have an other. You have to have someone to blame for all your problems. It most certainly can't be your lack of education. Dubbing. Uh, are there GQ pigs here? Wait. GQ pigs. What's a GQ pig? I'm confused. Um, but going on here, it then talks about in third or fifth grade, it's pure queer theory, the culture systems and assumptions. Oh, GOP. 
Uh, the culture systems and assumptions that everyone is straight and cis is called cis heteronormativity. This system is a form of oppression designed to benefit white, uh, white cis boys who are straight and to punish LGBTQ people. Again, so again, another issue that I have here. Can, can we all agree that adding everything to LGBTQ plus doesn't make any sense once the plus has been added? I'm, I'm, look, the point of language is to be communicated and then to be understood. Putting the plus there is enough to be understood. Adding more there is irrelevant when the plus is already there. As just my take. Or LGBTQIA+. Sure, we can do that one as well, because, you know, intersex and asexual added into the main bit, and then, you know, anything else after that. If you want to use more for the acronym, by all means, I'm not going to stop you. But in documentation, if we're making documentation for learning, making it as easy to understand and making it as easy to digest is probably better than being... I guess the best way would be uh, perfectly accurate. Said, what about GRSM? I mean, I'm okay with GRSM as well, but do you hear most people in common parlance saying GRSM? Y you don't really. If I say GRSM people out in the bu out in public, nobody's going to know what I say, but if I I'm saying, if I say LGBTQ plus people, almost everybody around me is going to go, oh yeah, no, yeah, I know what that is. Even if it's a better word, it's not the word that's been adapted. It's not the word that people are using. That's the thing with language is we kind of have to... We kind of have to use the words that are being utilized out in the wild. Because again, that's the thing about language. It's about communicating. And communication is a two-way street. That other person needs to be able to understand what you're saying without you constantly having to clarify every single time. But that's not the important part here. The important part here is the way that Christopher Rufo is framing it. The culture systems and assumptions that everybody is straight and cis is called cis heteronormativity. Let's go ahead and break that down real quick because I'm sure there's people who are going to get angry at that. Let's take a look at how many people are angry at that. Third grade? Is this really necessary? We talk about people fucking in fifth grade. Someone, it's fine. Have you seen the latest nonsense? What is this system and how exactly was it designed to punish? And there's the joke that, of course, always gets thrown out. These types of people saying it was designed to benefit someone to punish others means someone sat down and said, some there, there will be a lot of transgender people. So here's what we can do to punish them. No, Mr. Bob Delana, that is not what that means. So let's break that one down very, very quickly, very, very easily. If most of your people who are controlling society are cis dudes, boom, just cis dudes, doesn't that, nothing else has to be in there. We're not talking about race, we're not talking about anything else. Cis dudes. The language that is adapted into common parlance most of the time is going to come from the top down. It's going to be adopted from the aristocracy down. That language that is adopted from the top down is going to be even circumstantially, to the benefit of those people communicating with one another. If you look at the way language has changed over time, you would be surprised how quickly and how strangely it does change. What does it mean for something to be normative? There's a few ways you can break that down, but let's go ahead and get a Google definition for that real quick. There's a way I use it, but I know that's not the way that Google uses it. Normative, establishing, relating, or deriving from a standard or the norm, especially in behavior. So when I talk about normative, I'm talking about philosophy, and I would usually mean something is normative if that is what is preferred. That is what we are aiming for. Normal being what is considered the average. But here, likely, if we're talking about cis heteronormativity, they're likely talking about people who are just using language for the nor uh, because it is normal to talk about cis people. Even right now, if you think about most of the language you use in regards to trans people, if you 
have to think, even for a microsecond. Said there is no normal, there's only typical. As much as I want to agree with you, that is pure pedanticness. That is semantics. But, yeah, I do understand. The concept of normal is frequently used violently. When I'm saying normal, I'm talking about typical. But, when we're talking about cis-heteronormativity, we are talking about language that is normalizing the idea that cis and hetero people are most of what you're going to expect. That is how our language has operated for a very long time, at least here in the States and in England. As evidenced about that, think about the word gay and how awkward it was for that to get adapted from what it was into what it is now. How many times that's been used as an insult versus just a descriptive term. All of those little hurdles that happen with language, talking about any type of queer people, whether you be trans, whether you be gay, whether you be bi, whether you be anything, all those little language hurdles, all those little conversations that you have to have, all the times you've had to awkwardly uh, talk about coming out of the closet and how you're going to do it, all of that is because our language is built around cis heteronormativity. There is an active effort to change our language and make it more inclusive, make it less normative. But that's a thing that takes time and it takes a lot of effort. Now, when it says things like uh, this system is a form of oppression, it is on a on a macro level where most people don't think about it. It kind of is the fact that a person can grow up and only experience cis people around them, or at least as far as they know, only experience cis people around them. And then they have to have growing pains at 30 years old when they start discovering trans people exist. That leads to the trans people in that conversation being in an oppressive society. It may not be a, it may not be as cut and dry as somebody trying to oppress them, but the end result is the same. They're living in a society that is, by and large, not built to accommodate them. That is its own kind of oppression. I know that we'd like to say that, oh, well, that's actually just inconvenience. That's not oppression. I don't care. We're doing the same thing there, where we're being pedantic and using semantics, when the end result is purely identical. If the word I'm using and the word you are using are describing the same thing, then I don't fucking care what word we're using. All I care is we agree. Things are not as good as they could be for our friends who are trans. If that's all we have to agree on, then we don't have to fucking agree on the language we're using. It goes on to say teachers are encouraged to eliminate terms like girls and boys, ladies and gentlemen, mom and dad, Mr. or Mrs., boyfriend and girlfriend, and be sure to include language about how to pause puberty and use hormones and or surgeries. So let's take a look at these ones real quick. How's it going, Stone Dakota? If you have a friend or classmate who is gender diverse, make sure to ask them which words you can call them. When in doubt, stick to gender neutral words. That's not really a problem that that how how is that an issue that's literally saying be polite this is the equivalent of saying don't assume someone's name ask them their name what what's the what's the actual issue there boyfriend or girlfriend sweetie partner them friend i have never heard somebody say them friend I have pe heard people say sweetie. I have heard people say partner. I use partner myself. Mom and dad, just swap out for parents. That's fine. What's the issue there? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome guests or folks. Girls and boys, learners, mathematicians, people, kids. How's it going, kids? Hello, fellow kids. Hello, thinkers. Again, I don't see the issue. I've heard people hate people putting X's on things. And I've heard people hate everything. I, I can understand people hating their exes, but if I want to put them on the end of a word, that's fine. Who cares? Now they're now they're upset about spelling. 
At that point, they're upset about spelling. When I'm speaking. Who gets worried about spelling when I'm speaking? That doesn't make any sense. But it goes on. More and more. And then he's got his whole article written there, which I've already got pulled up. I've already looked at. But basically, this is the next bit of Christopher Rufo's nonsense. Shrieking shrill about LGBTQ people ruining the culture or ruining your children. He's made sure to include the slides that people are going to be putting on the internet for years to come so that they can call people groomers and go on and on and on. So when you see that language used repeatedly going forward, understand there is a source where it's coming from. It can probably help you to know where that source is. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And if you have not already, hit the like button to subscribe. Let me know what you think. Uh, there's a lot more deep diving into here that I probably need to do, but there's going to be more that Chris Rufo is going to be putting out over the next few weeks because he has said this is going to be a long-running campaign. As I said, we are at 4,118 retweets on there, and my internet just disconnected, so that froze a while ago. So let me know what your thoughts are. And as always, everybody, insert end of video tagline here.